Hi, I'm Murphy Griffin. I'm Madison Taylor. And welcome to episode four of Neophyte Boat Rides. In this episode, we're gonna give you more background on lofting. In particular, we're gonna be taking a look at boat plans and how to read and understand them. Now, before we can get to lofting our own boat, we thought it would be helpful to give you a better understanding of where the lines that we'll actually be drawing on our lofting board come from and what they represent. So, let's get to it. Let's talk about boat plans. What do they consist of? How are they generated? And how do you actually read the suckers? The quality and type of information that are included in boat plans depends in large part on the type of boat that you're going to be building. So if you're building a plywood boat, something like a uh, Phil Bulger style instant boat, or one of those big plywood barges that Dave Zeiger is known for, then the plans are gonna consist of generally templates that you can scale up or scale down as needed that you'll then cut out of plywood and assemble into a boat. The plans for a more traditional boat, like what we're gonna be building, generally always least has what are called the lines drawing. The lines or the lines drawing are an attempt to capture the three-dimensional shape of the boat in two dimensions. In order to do this, we need to look at the boat from numerous perspectives. We need to look at the front of the boat, the profile of the boat, the bottom of the boat, and the back of the boat. As promised, boats and boat building are full of weird foreign lingo. And we really start encountering this when we start talking about the lines drawing. So let's talk a little lingo really quick. In a lines drawing, the front and back of the boat are drawn together. And this view, the combined view of the front and the back of the boat, is called the body plan. The side view of the boat is what we call the profile view of the boat. The bottom or top of the boat, this view in the lines drawing is called the half breadth view, which will make more sense when we start talking about the table of offsets. So let's take a look at the lines drawing for the boat that we're building, the Newfoundland Trap Skiff. In a lines drawing, you have three different views, the profile, the half breadth, and the body plan. In the profile view, you're just looking at the side of the boat and these lines associated with the profile view are called the buttock lines. The top view is called the half breadth and the lines associated with the half breadth view are called the water lines. Finally, this middle view here is called the body plan. And this is as if you were just looking at the boat head on, but instead of having two sections of the front of the boat, They've given you the front on the right here, or the fore, and the back of the boat, the aft. The important line here is the station lines. Okay, so just some quick clarification before we go any further. What we'll be doing when we're lofting primarily is scaling up the lines from the plans to the lofting board. Now there are three sets of lines, the water lines, the buttock lines, and the station lines. All three sets of lines will be drawn on the lofting board. Now that being said, not all the lines are directly used on the boat when you're building it. They're only used indirectly in order to line things up and make sure that all the measurements are checking out. In fact, it's really the station lines that are the biggest players in the lofting process. From the station lines, you get all of the shapes that you need to make your molds which define the three-dimensional shape of the hull. The water lines and the buttock lines don't actually show up on the boat. They're really there just to check that all of the shapes that you're getting in your station lines are correct. What it means for them to be correct, we'll spend more time on in the next episode. But for now, just know that the water lines and the buttock lines don't actually show up on the boat, while the station lines 
define the shape of the molds. Once you have a good handle on the three perspectives that are represented in the lines drawing, the next natural question is, what the heck are all these lines? What's going on here? To understand the lines, it's best to understand how they're generated. It's really not that difficult, but it takes a little time to get used to. If you've ever spent any time looking at a topographical map and understand how topographical maps work, then you already know enough to understand how to read the lines. The principle behind how the lines are generated is the same as the principle behind how the lines are generated in a topographical map. The only difference is that we're doing it from three different perspectives instead of only one. In the case of a topographical map, we're only concerned with one perspective, namely a bird's eye perspective of a landscape. So we're gonna use the same topographical principle, but we're going to apply it from these three different perspectives. But before we can launch into a full-blown discussion of a lines drawing, we have some basics that we need to cover. What you see here is a three-dimensional representation of a small mountain range and below it the corresponding topographical representation. If you look closely above, you see that the mountain range has been subdivided at equal altitudes, so at 1,100 feet, 1,200 feet, 1,300 feet, and 1,400 feet. If we look at the 1,100 foot mark and we slice the mountain along that line at that particular altitude, we create a cross section. That cross section is projected down and becomes the topographical representation of the mountain at that particular altitude. So if you look below at the line that's marked 1100 feet, that represents the cross section of the mountain at 1100 feet, and so on and so forth for 1200, 1300, and 1400 feet. Each of those nested shapes corresponds to cross sections of the mountain range at progressively higher altitudes. This process of generating a topographical map of a mountain range is very much the same in principle to the process that's used to generate the lines drawing of a boat, but it does differ in some key ways. First off, we do it from three different perspectives as opposed to only one perspective. Secondly, we only need to really look at half of the boat instead of the whole boat. This is because most boats are symmetrical about their center line. So we really only need to look at half of the boat to capture all the information that we need to design or build a boat. So one of the difficulties that a beginning boat builder has to wrap their head around is the complicated curves and lines of a lines drawing, where that comes from, and how it relates to a boat. Um, you've already seen how a topographical map is very similar to a lines drawing, but we wanted to give you a more clear and tangible view of that lines drawing's relation to the actual boat itself. So what we'll be doing is taking these boat models and chopping them up so that you can see how the complicated shapes and lines of a three-dimensional boat are translated into a two-dimensional map. And that is essentially where the lines come from.
Okay, so we've sliced up our three models, and we sliced it just like you would a loaf of bread. Each time we sliced it from a different direction. Each different direction corresponds to a different set of lines. So here you can see that we generated our water lines. Here we generated our station lines. And here we generated our buttock lines. So if we look at the buttock line case, you can see that all the slices that we made were parallel with the center line of the boat. Now these lines look straight from this perspective, but when we turn it, you see that those lines are actually curved. These curved lines are the buttock lines. So here you can see directly where the buttock lines come from. The outline of each sliver of the half model is traced onto the paper, being careful to keep them aligned with one another. What results are the buttock lines of the boat seen in the profile view? If we do the same thing with the water lines, and I'm gonna leave the keel behind, you can see that in this case, the slices that we made are now parallel with the bottom of the boat or with the shear or parallel with the line of the water. And that's why these are called water lines. So seen from this perspective, you see straight lines. But if I turn it like this, you can see a series of curved lines. These curved lines correspond to what we call the water lines. And in the last case, with a little bit of luck, you can see, I'm careful, that the lines that we slice the boat along are now parallel with the front or the back of the boat. So they're straight from this perspective and curved if you look along the boat like so. These lines correspond to the station lines. That was episode four of Neophyte Boat Rides. Thanks for watching. Yeah, we hope you have a better understanding of boat plans, the lines, and how it relates to building a boat. We'd like to give a shout out to our newest patrons, our good friend Philip Shuck. And Ella Montoya. Thank you guys so much for contributing and helping us keep this going. So if you guys want to help us keep the project going, please consider becoming a patron. Every little bit helps and you'll get access to all sorts of cool bonus material. You can check out a link in the description below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye. Bye.